The Centurion Project Written by the Eighth Day of Night Chapter 48 At the End of War, Part 1 Elias sighed and rubbed at his forehead. He thought he knew what stress was, but he was working double time to ensure that everything was prepared for Friday. He wanted to make sure he spent no time thinking about work during his date with Luna, and that meant spending every minute of the days leading up to the wedding planning and working. All of his meetings had been squeezed in before Bookbinder had left, and Scarlet and Snowball were beside him as they moved quickly to the first meeting of the day, an inventory meeting with the Lionheart. The Solar General had been giving a minor slap on the wrist for his part in the duel, and Celestia writing it off as the stallion being under the influence of the changeling. Elias knew it was a lie, but he didn't care. Most Celestia and Lionheart were stepping lightly around him, giving him plenty of space to work. They knew they had fucked up, and they were doing everything they could to keep Elias on board with the plan. It meant they were bowing to his every whim, and more often than not, he barely even had to raise his voice to get what he wanted. He just needed to push through a few more things before the wedding, and then he was set. Elias took a deep breath and hoped his migraine would lessen as the mornings went on. As he pushed open the throne room doors, he had a feeling that such a boon would not come to pass. Cadence practically skipped alongside Twilight and her friends. Even with her magic being slowly packed away, she felt as light as a feather. She and her new husband had the best extended honeymoon a pair of newlyweds could have. As soon as she returned, she had made plenty of space in her schedule to make up for the lost time with her favorite sister-in-law, all culminating in the most enjoyable, relaxing months of her life. Even in the morning where they were all coming back from a simple trip to Donut Joe's, followed by a walk in one of Canelot's many parks, had been simply wonderful, and Cadence couldn't help but to keep a wide smile on her face as she listened to Twilight chatter with her friends. The elements were all wonderful ponies, and Cadence hoped everything went well with their meeting with Celestia. She had been advised to bring as few retainers as possible, but if she had Twilight and her friends, the march might just be enjoyable. The golden-clad guards opened the throne room doors without a word. Cadence continued listening to Twilight as she and Rarity talked about how they wanted this year's gala to go. And as they entered the throne room, her aunt looked up and smiled. Welcome all. I am happy to see you and extend my warmest welcome. Twilight charged ahead prompting Celestia to rise so that the mentor and student could share an affectionate nuzzle. It also gave Cadence a brief moment to study her aunt. Though it wouldn't be noticeable to most ponies yet, she could clearly see that her aunt was much shorter, and her mane was beginning to lose its multicolored glow. The solar winds that made it move were also blowing slower, so much so that only the tip of her mane shifted. After they finished with their more intimate greeting, Twilight trotted down from the throne room with a light blush on her face, while Celestia resumed her seat and smiled. I hope it was not too difficult to get past our increased security. Rainbow Dash snorted and waved a hoof. Please, the guys can stop us if they wanted to. She leaned over and nudged Twilight. Especially when Twilight's brother is a captain and doing the dirty with. The Pegasus hissed as Applejack swatted her with her Stetson. The farm pony jabbed a hoof at the blue Pegasus. Ain't no need for being crude when there's princesses present. He turned to Celestia with a bashful smile as she put her hat back on. Begging your pardon for my friend, princess. Sister Sword lightly and glanced at Cadence. <laughs> I don't think it is private knowledge what Captain Armor and Princess Cadence get up to on their extended honeymoon. Though I appreciate the sentiment, Applejack. Cadence giggled as Applejack gave Celestia another bow before whirling on Rainbow Dash. The pair quickly set to quietly bickering, while the rest of their friends looked on with a range of facial expressions, mostly exasperation. Tony sighed and looked at Celestia with a please help me look. And decided that she could get the ball rolling easily enough, though for some reason she felt her ear twitch. So, Auntie, we received your letter. What would you like us to help with today? Dusty gave her a near invisible wink and a grin before smiling at Twilight. It is not so much something you can do, but rather somebody I'd like you to. And I'm telling you that we absolutely must have extra wagons! The golden clad pony shouted, drawing everyone's attention. We simply need to carry more water! Kent had no idea how she had missed the table that sat in the back of the corner of the throne room. A swarm of ponies dressed in silver and red ran about the pell-mell around the large table that seemed to be covered in papers that the tabletop wasn't visible. Standing at the center of the madness was a tall, pale creature, also dressed in silver and red. The human she had heard about seemed like a giant when compared to the ponies around him, 
and it took Cadence a moment to realize that he was likely more taller than her aunt at her diminished size. The human didn't look up as he wrote something down on a sheet of paper before passing it to the white pegasus that sat beside him. The pegasus in turn turned the human with a small note, which he only gave a passing glance at before handing it back. Tell General Nightshade she can bring some of her guard ponies on our afternoon march, only if they can keep up. We slow our pace for nobody. The Pegasus passed the note on to the other several glad ponies, who sprinted away immediately. The human then looked at the golden armored unicorn, and Cadence winced as his words seemed to punch into the air. And I'm telling you that we don't, the human snarled. I'm tired of arguing this. We plan to march near a river for a reason. We will get our water from there. The pony tossed his purple mane and groaned. We should not have to drink filthy river water. It is unsanitary. The human went back to writing on paper before him. General, I don't know how I'm the only one who seems to remember this, but you have magic. We will use sanitation and filtering spells to ensure that the water is clean and drinkable. If you have to haul water with us, we'll need to protect at least 40 more wagons, something we do not have the troop strength to do. We need to be doing everything in our power to reduce the number of wagons we bring, not add an inane number of worthless wagons. Cadence heard Rarity snort, and the white unicorn leaned over to Fluttershy. How garish. Look at how stifling those uniforms are. Those poor ponies must be suffering. But I whispered back at a reply that Cadence didn't catch. The pony Cadence was fairly certain was Duke Shatter Shield, tossed a hoof into the air. Fine then, why don't we just throw away all of our wagons? Why not just take a single barrel? Or better yet, since we're so interested in saving space, why take any? Let's just take a single canteen and share it all, like animals. The human didn't glance up from his work. General, stop acting like a child. You act like I'm threatening your well-being. We are taking empty barrels to store and transport water on the march. I believe that we should take 200 with half filled at all times. What do you think we should take? Shadow said something clear to this table. <sighs> Make it 300. That way we have spares in case of some barrels get ruined. The human nodded silently in agreement and wrote the number down on a separate slip of paper. The white pigasus at his side quickly snatched the slip away and began recording the number into a large notebook. Snowball, make sure those are made and ready by the end of today. They want to be conducting advanced practice marches by the end of the week. Yes, General. The pigasus replied without looking up. The table fell into relative silence, and Celestia seemed to sense an opportunity to regain verbal control of the throne room. She cleared her throat softly, and Shadow Shield eyes shot up from the table. He saluted instantly, and Cadence could have sworn she saw sweat beating on his forehead as he spoke quickly. My apologies, Princess. General Bright and I were merely involved in a very detailed discussion. Was this something you needed? So he smiled warmly in return. No, General Shield. I was merely hoping your planning session could wait for a moment while I spoke with General Bright. Shadow Shield bowed. Of course, Princess. I will be out of your way then. The unicorn bowed again and moved away from the table, casting nervous glances at the hunched over human. Everyone waited quietly as the human continued to work, occasionally mumbling to himself. As minutes ticked by, even the silver-clad ponies around the human began to show signs of nervousness, but none of them said anything. They instead continued carrying out their jobs, though they were slowly grinding to a nervous halt. An angry itch began in Cadence's ear as the second minute passed with nothing from the human. The sea looked as calm as ever as she cleared her throat again. <clears throat> General Bright, I would like a moment to speak with you. Cadence's ears flicked. That wasn't the language her aunt had taught her to use with subordinates. That kind of speaking was reserved for foreign dignitaries, and then only the important ones. A princess of Equestria certainly didn't have to ask one of her employees for time to speak. It just wasn't how things worked. The human stuck a finger in the air. Just a second, princess. I'm almost finished. Cadence does a small tail flick from her aunt. The elder Alicorn's face was still calm. Can it not wait? I promise that this will only take a... It can wait. The human replied rudely. It saw a light frown break from her aunt's professional mask, and she saw looks of horror on the faces of Twilight and her friends. None of them matched the emotion she felt. Rage. How dare he disrespect Celestia like that? 
How dare he treat any pony like that? Her muzzle curled into a snarl and she stomped her hoof. The noise carried easily to the throne room, and it acted as a precursor to her voice. General, she snapped. You will stand at attention and address your princess properly now. The light stopped writing mid-sentence, and the room fell into a silence that seemed almost unnatural. A glance upward in his peripherals found his legionaries waiting with bated breath for his response. But they were expecting him to explode in reply. They would be disappointed. He slowly finished writing the rest of the sentence he had been working on and set his quill back into his well. Taking a deep breath, Eli straightened, glancing at Snowball. <sighs> Have the troops finish their drills and move on to formation practice in the next 15 minutes, he said softly. I'll be out there shortly to inspect their progress. Dismissed. His legionary scrambled into action, officially gathering up all the paperwork into neat and orderly stacks as they raced through the rear entrance of the throne room. Some balls lost one out, waiting for the ink to dry on the supply sheet that Elias had been working on. With his troops out of the way, Elias glanced towards Shadow Shield, keeping his voice as low as he spoke. General, I think it's best we pick this up later. Don't you agree? The pony looked like he was about to soil himself, but he kept his composure, nodded quickly. Indeed I do. I will set it up with your assistant. Elias gave him a nod, motioning slightly towards the exit in which his legionaries had left. Shadow Shield beat a hasty retreat, and Elias had expressed a smirk as the door slammed behind him. At least there was some sort of intelligence amongst the solar generals. Behind him, the alicorn he was certain was Caden snorted. Well, General, I am waiting. Elias stared hard at the table before him for a moment, then decided he would play the pink alicorn's game. He slowly straightened to his full height, and Elias swore he heard a small gulp behind him. Resting his hand on his gladius, Elias spun on his heel and walked towards the group of assembled ponies. All except Cadence were vaguely familiar, and Elias quickly remembered the face of the elements from their various meetings. They all used different strategies to try and seem unintimidated. Rainbow Dash and Applejack tried to puff up, but the latter withered slightly back when Elias' eyes flicked to her. Elias and Rarity seemed the most collected, but he caught nervous twitches from both of them. Fluttershy hid behind a pair of the unicorns, while the pink one Elias had only seen once, Pinkie Pie, seemed to bounce in place. She had an odd look on her face, an unnaturally cheery smile, accompanied by a strange twitching. Looking at her made Elias feel a trace of nervousness race up his spine, but he ignored her. Strange as she was, his reports indicated that she wasn't a threat. That left Princess Cadence. The pink alicorn was doing her best to look calm. But perhaps her experience with being taller than almost everyone around her made her less confident when the person she was trying to reprimand was a good foot or two taller than she was. She did a good job keeping a passive expression on her face, though. At least until Elias removed his glasses. The illusion peeled away, exposing his bad eye and his long black scar for the world to see. He was pleased to note a flinch out of Cadence as he came to a stop, clasping his hands behind his back as he glanced at Celestia. Princess... What can I do for you and Princess Cadenza today? He kept his voice short and low, making each word forceful. Though he was at most mildly irritated about being treated like some kind of lapdog, he knew what anger sounded like, and so pretending to be a step away from Furious was easy. Cadence glanced at Celestia, who smiled calmly. General, we were merely hoping for your opinion on a matter concerning the march. It shouldn't take much time at all. Elias gave her a small nod. Of course. Should Miss Sparkle and her friends be dismissed? Hey! Dash protested. We have names, you know. What makes you so special that you could just ignore a princess? Elias fixed her with the glare, saying nothing. The flapping Pegasus crossed her hooves and glared back. The elements are more than welcome, General. Sister intervened. She looked to Dash with a smile. As to your question, Rainbow Dash... General Bright is the guard that escorted my sister to safety the day of the royal wedding. His scars are a result of that staunch defense. Oh. Dash squeaked, setting all four hoes on the ground. Yeah, that's pretty special. Elias felt his bad eye twitch as a hint of real anger broke through, but he quickly suppressed it and looked to Celestia as she spoke. General, I asked the elements here today because you have a final say in the matter concerning them. I have already taken the liberty of discussing it with everyone else individually, and we have come to an agreement. Elias noticed the word individually. 
I thought she had talked to any dissenters into whatever plan she had one-on-one, -on -one, and now hoped to bully him into acceptance with the pressure of a second princess, as well as the ponies he would no doubt reject. Apparently her memory about his experience with public pressure hasn't stuck. Lys grinned internally. He would make sure this time she remembered good and well. Regardless, Sister continued, I wish for your opinion before making the final decision, since your honesty threatens to rival that of fair Applejack. Ah, shucks, princess, the orange front pony said, tipping her head. I just don't feel right saying nothing but the truth. Elias never let his face change from a soft frown. And what is the matter in question? He asked. Sasu took this query as a positive sign, because she strained in her seat, her smile didn't waver as she spoke. As you well know, the element of harmony are a powerful tool that we have found great use for in, in the past few years. It is my belief that they can do even more good again. It is my wish that Twilight and the other elements join us on the march to Saddle Arabia. Silence fell like a shroud on the room as Eli stared at the elecorn. She stared back, waiting for a response. No doubt an expecting quick yes. Probably expects me to bow and say, how do you do too? Elias thought. And Luna okayed this, he said aloud. Just say not instantly. Of course. It took a bit of convincing, but she and Twilight are close friends, and with their minds working together, they could no doubt offer further assistance in planning out the logistics of the march. Just say you don't trust my judgment, Elias thought. Instead of giving a verbal answer, however, he looked to the elements, looking over them with an appraising eye. Several of them puffed out their chests with pride, not sure of his response as Celestia was. Elias loved the thought of crushing their misplaced pride into the dirt. He looked back to Celestia and shook his head. I hate to disappoint, he said diplomatically, but my answer must be a firm no. Celestia's smile fell, and though it was slight, her posture did as well. May I ask why not? She replied. Elias nodded and looked back to the elements. Simply put, there are safety risk. I see maybe two fighters in the whole bunch, and that is only with substantial training. Training they will not receive in time for us to leave. He glanced back at Celestia and shrugged. Princess, maybe if this had been your plan from the beginning, we could have thrown them in with my legion, and we could have gotten them up to fighting strength. But with only four months left, I'm not going to be responsible for leading the elements of harmony to their deaths. Now hold your horses, Abdek protested, drawing another glare from Elias. She ignored it as she spoke. We may not be fancy guard ponies, but we know how to hold our own. Yeah, Imberdash said. We were at the wedding too. She flapped into the air and began jabbing with her hooves. We kicked a mad changeling butt. You were captured. Flash replied bluntly. I read the reports, and had it not been for Princess Cadenza and Captain Armor, you would have been imprisoned or enslaved by changelings, at best. Elias spread his hands. On another note, did you actually kill any changelings? Any at all? The group of ponies looked amongst themselves and shook their heads collectively. Elias nodded. Right, that's what I thought. This is not as simple as you may believe. We intend to go through the lands of a warrior species, and while you may hesitate to kill them, the Minotaurs will not hold the same reservations towards you. I know for a fact that I wouldn't. Elias and Ren looked back to Celestia. A definite no. They'll only get themselves killed, leaving Equestria without one of its defenses. I highly advise against bringing them. Cadence moved into Elias' line of sight, sitting at the steps of Celestia's throne. She seemed to have recovered from his grim appearance and was instead trying to act as calm and collected as the elder Aricorn. She wasn't bad at it, if Elias was being honest. She met his eyes evenly before she spoke. Could we not bring more guards? We could train the elements quite a bit in the next few months, and what knowledge or skill in battle they lack could be compensated by assigning them each a group of bodyguards. Elias frowned and shook his head. I'm afraid that won't work, princess. We are already taking just about everyone with us. Captain Armor will only be left with about 500, 10 of which are veterans. The rest are fresh recruits that he'll be training while we're gone. There is simply nobody to spare. He straightened slightly. If you want my honest opinion, 
I would leave the elements in Canala as an additional safeguard. If they are as good as defense as you say and think they are, then they should be able to help Captain Armor immensely, especially given the situation we're leaving Equestria in. What situation? Pilot asked, piping up. Let's get back to the unicorn. I'm a historian, Miss Sparkle, and I've done my homework. world ending threats have a nasty tendency to occur when a princess is distracted. He glanced towards Celestia. And this march will put all three out of commission. That's dangerous. I think we should leave the elements here to help Captain Armor protect Canterlot. He spread his hands. If you don't want that for them, then I recommend not involving them at all. So stay frowned. General, I had hoped you'd be more agreeable on this matter. Well, I started to reply. I didn't accept this position to be agreeable. And I accepted to make sure the job was done right. I recommend you trust my judgment. And just where is this judgment coming from? Cadence asked. Still dealing with these horrible allergies, so again, forgive me if the voices sound a little different. I can't exactly hit all of my ranges that I normally do, especially Elias right now, so hey, you know, hopefully next time it'll be a lot better. However, what is a lot better is thanking my wonderful Patreons. That made no sense. No matter. Uh, thank you my tier 1s, Bounds, Kindness, Chase the Master, Dreamless Portal, Hyperlink, Jason, HK4, AK Texture, 9 Game, McCario, Pony Bunny Entertainment, Starlight Blaze, and Rain Flicker. My tier 2s, Captain Blue Shadow, Chaotic Mist, The Animated Ghost, DJ Mac 2000, Elemental Wolf, H1 Wolf King, Potato 20, Mr. Crazy Deacon, Mackenzie McCollas, Nocturne, Papa Lennon, Redeemer of Dark, Souls Eclipse, Sword Brother and Mordred, Artie Bryant, and Rion the Dragon Wolf. A large thank you to my current Titan, uh, my previous Titan tiers, Dark Guardian, Danish Dash, and Maverick. And a large thank you to my current ones, User1842 and Silent Titan. I appreciate your support so much and it means a ton to me. That aside, however, this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day. Oh, future Firehearth here. I almost forgot. If you enjoyed this background music, it is made by Abyssal Labs. It is a fan-made TCP song. I'll be leaving it down in the description down below for you to check out. Consider giving them some love. Thank you so much for creating this, man. I know the general loved it. Anyways, do you guys have a wonderful day?